What's up guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. Now, before we start the review, I wanna give a couple of quick shout outs, one of which to Harry's Holsters. Harry sent along an incredible holster for me to do the review um, and do some long-term testing with the gun we're gonna be talking about here in just a little bit. Now, this is something a little bit different for me. Yes, it's orange and it's in uh, carbon fiber, which I absolutely love. I'm a big fan of the color orange. Of course, you guys know that but I'm gonna be doing some appendix carry work. And admittedly, I have never carried appendix before. So this will be an interesting uh, experiment. And thankfully, because Harry's holsters are so uh, versatile, I can always switch them around if for some reason I don't like that. So Harry, thanks so much, brother. More on the uh, experience with the holster and the appendix carry sometime later in the future. But then also a quick shout out to Fort Scott Munitions. I'm gonna be doing some long-term testing with their new ammo. It's 115 grain ammo. Now, I've been carrying Fort Scott munitions 80 grain for quite some time and I absolutely love it. So when I uh, got together with the guys and uh, they talked about their new ammo, I definitely jumped on the opportunity to give it a try and see what the differences are, some of the different characteristics and how it performed in all of my carry guns. So more thoughts on that as well. Let's go ahead and start the review. The first gun I bought right when I turned 21 was a Smith & Wesson 915. The all-steel double-action single-action 9mm was a tank and an excellent value for the times, but the budget handgun category has evolved over the years. Now in 2018, we have quite a few really good choices. Now I know budget means different things to different people, but when I think budget, I'm really referring to guns that come in under roughly $350 out the door. The same important attributes should be considered even if you are looking to not break the bank, but still enjoy the shooting sports and perhaps concealed carry. Factors such as reliability, accuracy, ergonomics, aftermarket support, and the final cost are all still vital to ensure you have a fun and safe experience. Some options in the budget category that come to mind are the Smith & Wesson SD9VE, the Walther Creed, the Sky CPX, and the Ruger Security 9, which I reviewed at the beginning of the year, and frankly, I really enjoyed it. That brings us to the Taurus G2C. Now the G2C is a mild refresh of the very popular and successful PT-111. With an MSRP of about $315 and a much lower street price, let's dive down and see if the G2C is really worth a look. When I started the review process on this, I, I have to admit guys, I was a little bit skeptical and I was skeptical for a couple of reasons. When I think of budget-minded firearms, I know that uh, reliability and consistency can sometimes be an issue. Now that's not always the case, but sometimes it is. So a little bit skeptical of that. And I've heard various reports on the PT-111 family of firearms, some of which are glowing. Um, and a lot of people have recommended me review this, but some have been less than glowing. So again, on the fence on that, but then also I will admit, this is the first Taurus I've ever owned and it's the first Taurus I've ever shot. So with brand unfamiliarity, um, again, and I was a little bit skeptical, so more on my thoughts as we move along with that. But let's knock some specs out of the way real quick. The overall length is 6.25 inches. The height is 5 inches. The barrel length is 3.25 inches. The width, and I will give you a good look at that of course, it's going to be 1.25 inches. The weight unloaded is 21.15 ounces. Now for magazines, you do get two 12 round steel magazines. They've got a, a yellow follower on there, which actually I think is kind of nice. They're decent quality magazines. And I understand there's some uh, compatibility with a few other magazines out there. I believe the uh, six hour P226, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that. And then I understand that some, I think it's the 24 seven magazines also work. So there might be some extended magazine options, but at least 12 rounds out of the box and two magazines, that's actually pretty good. Now the slide finish on this is a matte black and matte it is. I mean, there's really hardly any glare whatsoever. And you guys know, I love matte finishes. First, I think they're just a little bit easier to grab onto and they aren't fingerprint magnets either. So I think Taurus did a really good job with this. I actually think it's a pretty good looking gun and that coupled with this gray polymer frame. Now it's kind of gray, it's not very gray, but apparently they call it the gray finish. Um, it, it just, I think it's a really good combo. Now, of course, the action on this is striker, as you would expect. 
And then as far as safeties go, a couple of things. Of course, it does have your uh, safety lever right here on the trigger, and that's the same with a lot of modern firearms out there. But then it also has a thumb safety. Now, generally speaking, I'm not a big fan of thumb safeties, but this one stays pretty much out of the way. And, you know, with a little bit of training, getting used to that, it's really not too bad. It's positive, it's articulate, but it's got just enough umph to be able to really stay locked in, or at least I found that to be the case. Now, it may loosen up over time. I don't know. Of course, I'll have to report back to you guys on that. But by and large, the specs on this are actually really, really solid. All right, let's jump into the features on this guy. Now, you guys know I love to start with the grip and the texture and that sort of thing, all the ergonomics. And I will say the texture on this firearm is fantastic. Now, this is very reminiscent to maybe a Smith & Wesson 2.0 type of texture, although maybe just one notch less than that. And I think that is just about perfect. So um, I don't think this is going to grind on the skin or your clothes entirely too much, but it does allow for an incredibly solid purchase. And I also really like the fact that they broke this up. I, I think it it actually makes it look like a really nice firearm and uh, it's got the Taurus logo right here it's very nicely done I mean I, I really appreciate this grip texture now one thing it does not have it doesn't have any sort of a recess to be able to clear the magazine if you have a malfunction now there may be enough surface on this uh, kind of pinky extension right here plus this little lip to be able to still yank it out without too much of a problem but I like to see guns have that recess now I know this is budget minded so you might not get all of the features that you typically want but uh, but I still like to have that feature. Now it does have a little bit of a groove here if you're the type to use that for any sort of a reference but uh, but I have to say it's very comfortable um, it feels really good in the hand. And then it actually has a little bit of a reference point up here on the front of the frame as well. And that actually is just perfect for my thumb. My thumb sat right here, made it really nice. Um, I, I like that. It's a good attention to detail, again, for a budget-minded firearm. That's really nice. Now, the rest of this grip texture is pretty smooth. But again, um, as long as you've got this, uh, this exaggerated texture down here, I really found that the gun didn't go anywhere. And it's got enough of a recess right here that... Uh, that I really was able to get up on this gun and it actually sits pretty low in the hand. So that really added to the shooting experience. And of course, more on my thoughts on that here in just a little while. Now it does have a slide stop as you would expect. It's not ambidextrous and neither is the trigger in case you're wondering. I'm not sure if you can flip this around. It kind of looks like you can. I haven't dug around on the inside enough to really find out. So if you guys know, be sure to leave a comment down below. And then as far as takedown, and I will take this down a little bit later on in the video, it's just your standard takedown levers on both sides, similar to something like a Glock. So if you've got familiarity with that, this is going to be no problem at all. And then it does have a small accessory rail for lights, lasers, chainsaws, that sort of thing. And um, and again, it's really nice. I mean, it's it's pretty feature rich as far as the frame goes. And, uh, and for the money, I, I think they've done a pretty good job. As for the slide, several things are going on, one of which are the rear serrations. Now, it does have some okay serrations. I would have to admit that I'd like them to be a little bit deeper. They've got some bite to them, but they don't have a lot. Now, thankfully, with this matte finish, that helps kind of aid that, uh, uh, that racking of the slide. But then we do have some front grooves up here as well. And I like these quite a bit. First, it breaks up the lines of the gun a little bit. And then it also helps to uh, to do any sort of press checks. If that's something that's important to you, it's not too big of a deal to me. But, uh, but it's nice that they did that. And overall, I like the look of the slide. Now, also in terms of looks, it does have a Taurus banner right here. And I'm not a big fan of large banners, brand names, that sort of thing. At least it's milled in and it's not, you know, painted white or anything like that. So um, it's, it's not entirely too bad. Of course, it does say G2C 9mm on the other side, kind of a big banner as well. Uh, but, I, you know, you can get over that. It's not going to obviously impede the functionality of the gun or anything like that, so not too big of a deal. As for sights, a couple of things. These are polymer, I do believe. Um, I was able to scratch them just a little bit, so if you guys know anything different, be sure to leave a comment down below. But to my knowledge, that's what these are. Now, these rear sights are kind of unique. First, there are a couple of actual adjustment points right here. And so you can do a little bit of mild adjustment on this, which is interesting and something somewhat unique for uh, the budget uh, category and frankly, really the polymer category in general. Now it's a three dot white setup. You guys will notice that the front post actually is a little bit orange. I actually painted this um, and I painted it because 
uh, the front sight originally was incredibly faint. I mean, I could hardly make it out. Now, uh, all the shooting that you're seeing on this video was done with the sight as is. Um, I hadn't painted it yet. Um, that was kind of a lesson learned after I shot the gun. And the gun still performed fine. I was still able to pick up the sights without too much of an issue, but uh, but it would have been nice to have a little bit more call out on that front. So that's why I did that. In fact, it was the first time I've ever bought fingernail polish. That was an interesting experience and uh, got a wink from the guy that was checking me out at the drugstore. So that was kind of fun. Uh, but uh, but anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad I did the uh, the fingernail polish and, and it worked quite well. So uh, more on those thoughts perhaps at a later time. Uh, but then there is also a loaded indicator right here. Now it stays out of the way. It's really not too bad. It does stick up a little bit so it is tactile but uh, uh, but it, it doesn't impede your sight picture or anything like that. And loaded indicators, they're, they're fine. It doesn't bother me one way or the other so long as it's not distracting or anything like that or get in the way or impede the functionality uh, to one degree or another and I've never run across one that did. So again, not too bad. So as far as features go, this thing really is pretty feature rich. All right, let's go ahead and take this down and take a look inside for just a moment or two. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger more on that here in just a moment because you'll notice I'm pulling the trigger a couple of times and I know I always get comments, hey, you're doing that wrong or whatever. Well, you know what, the gun's apart, it's fine and I didn't break it. So um, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. Uh, but then we have our normal components, everything that you would expect in a normal polymer firearm. We've got our slide, our barrel, our spring and guide rod assembly, and then our frame. And everything is as you would expect. It's all uh, reasonably easy to maintain, reasonably clean. Just your basic stuff that you would expect. It's very similar to uh, firearms like Glocks and that sort of thing. So uh, then we've got our barrel. Still has some of the packaging grease on there, even though I've cleaned the hell out of this thing. For some reason, there's some little pockets that I haven't discovered yet that uh, have some of that grease in them. And then we've got our guide rod and spring assembly right there. And then we've got our frame. And again, as you would expect, uh, nothing terribly exciting, but, uh, but again, easy to clean, easy to maintain. Um, and uh, yeah, not entirely too big of a deal. Now, in terms of putting it all back together, we need to take our slide and barrel, put those in, and then we'll reseat our guide rod and spring assembly. And then we'll get our frame and throw this back on. And we are good to go. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I was a little bit skeptical, especially when I went to the range to start shooting. Now I put 250 rounds through the firearm and that skepticism was somewhat put to rest after a flawless 250 rounds. So everything worked just fine. Everything cycled properly. The gun performed exactly as I expected it to do. And frankly, guys, it was a lot of fun to shoot at the range. Uh, the ergonomics are good enough on this gun, especially with that grip texture that uh, the gun stayed planted. It was very predictable and I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it uh, it kind of brought me back to shooting something like the uh, Glock 26 or the Smith & Wesson 9C or maybe even the VP9 uh, SK. And I know I'm dropping some guns that are a little bit higher up the uh, dollar food chain, of course, but, uh, but still kind of that same feeling because it's not a full size grip. I would put this pretty much in a subcompact category and I use that loosely, but, uh, uh, but again, it was really fun and I was pleasantly surprised and actually really excited that it functions so well. And, um, and I was happy to share that experience with the other guys at Centerfire Shooting Sports. That's my home away from home. And, uh, and they were all very impressed as well. I mean, it was fun. Now I did notice that the gun ran really hot, uh, by the time I was done because I tend to shoot just sort of back to back. Uh, um, I don't do a lot of stopping other than to reload and do a quick change on the uh, the video cameras, but that's it. So um, it got really darn hot, but, uh, but hey, you know, it's a gun. A lot of guns get warm. So other than that, it really was a ton of fun. Now, aside from the ergonomics, the shooting experience also comes down to a lot of times the trigger. So let's jump into the trigger for a moment or two. It's actually a fairly interesting trigger, I, I have to admit. Now, as I said before, it's got the safety lever on it, so you do have to make sure that you depress the uh, the lever on it. But then, once you do, this is the funny part. You'll notice that goes all the way back. Now, I have to admit, it's super smooth. Um, I mean, there's there's no grit whatsoever. But man, I gotta tell you, there is a lot of take up. The first couple of rounds that I shot, it sort of took me by surprise. In fact, the very first round, I actually thought I had a dead gun. 
But then I realized, and I, I thankfully held it for just a moment longer and pressed a little bit longer, and lo and behold, the trigger went off. Now, um, that brake is not the cleanest brake out there. It's a tiny bit spongy, but otherwise it's really not too bad. It's actually pretty light. It comes in around four and a half pounds, believe it or not, which is absolutely fantastic for, um, I think, for a carry gun anyway. Now with the reset, the reset is right there, and this might be the best part of the trigger. Notice that reset's there, and we're actually at the wall. So we can just shoot again. And as long as you don't mind working with that take up and just knowing that it's going to be a mile and a half and about a month later before you get to that break or that wall rather, and then you get your break and then we'll get to our reset. This trigger actually is really surprisingly good. Now I wish it wasn't quite so much take up and I wish it broke a little bit further forward, but Beggars can't necessarily be choosers, and I'd rather have this trigger than some of the other triggers out there on the market. So uh, pretty interesting uh, stuff right here, but again, it's not too bad. Now I've heard a couple of times people say you're not supposed to dry fire Tauruses uh, for whatever reason. I, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm gonna keep dry firing it because I prefer to do that. I like dry firing. It's a good way to work in the gun and also practice. Okay, I was in the middle of the editing process and I realized you guys almost let me get away without mentioning one really important feature about this little guy right here. We've been talking about the trigger, of course, and again, it's a good trigger, but there's something very unique about it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger and under normal circumstances, you'd have to rack the slide to reset the trigger. However, in this case, you actually have double strike capability. In other words, this trigger is going to reset itself and it gets to almost more of a double action rather than a single action pull. I know that's kind of interesting to talk about with a striker fired firearm, but the trigger is ready to go again and you can pull it. It's a little heavier, of course, but uh, uh, but it's kind of an unusual feature, especially for a value-oriented firearm. So again, sorry guys, almost forgot to mention that. That's kind of cool. So what are my thoughts on the Taurus G2C overall? Well guys, I have to admit, although I walked into this pretty skeptical, I've walked out so far being very impressed. It functioned flawlessly, 250 rounds, not a problem. Now I'll admit, I've got a lot more rounds I wanna put through this because this is going into my carry rotation, as you can see here with the Harry's holster. I'm gonna be testing it not only with all my different uh, range ammo that I use, and I use a variety of different range ammo, frankly, whatever's cheap and bulk, uh, but then also my carry ammo, the Fort Scott munitions, but I'm, I'm gonna run some other carry ammo through it as well because I'm just really curious to see where I can push the boundaries of this gun. So once it gets over somewhere around the five or 600 round mark, um, I'll feel a lot more comfortable about carrying it and making sure that it's working properly. And that's the same that I do with every gun. So uh, again, the Taurus has been really impressive so far. It's got a lot of features going for it, especially for the money. And I picked it up again for around $250 out the door. Uh, so getting the good ergonomics, um, the great grip texture, a surprisingly good trigger, although long take up, it's pretty impressive. Now the sights, the sights could be better, no doubt about that. But uh, but that's you know that's not the end of the world, especially for a gun like this. I I'm okay with that. Um, and and putting a little bit of fingernail polish in there, uh, that helped it out quite a bit. So I'll be excited to report back more findings on this at a later time because this is going to be in the collection uh, probably permanently. And um, I've got some some plans for this for sure. So guys, I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this. If you've got some experience with Taurus or the G2C or the PT1. 11. I'm always interested in hearing about that and love carrying on conversations with you guys. Once again, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.